All right, welcome back to Asteroids Part 10. Last time we were able to get the ship moving around. We got pixels working. Um, you should have seen the code fix that I put into uh, Schoology. That's a little picture of the code that you need to fix. Um, we got all this working, and then when the player gets hit by an, hit by an asteroid, they turn red. Um, we're going to fix that today, and we're going to make game states. So, game states, we're going to go over to our main file. Game states are going to kind of be like our tracker for what part of the game we're on, so that we can um, know when we're playing and when we're dead and everything like that. And so we're going to do make a couple um, variables. So we're going to do int game state. And for right now, I'm going to put a comment in here because this is pretty important. A zero is going to be the start menu. A one for this variable is going to be the game. And a two is going to be a game over. Then we're going to need, we're going to throw in a score. And we're going to throw in a round. And we're going to need a round title counter. We need a Boolean called not round one. I think that's it. <clears throat> so then I'm going to teach you about, actually we should probably instantiate these first before I teach you that. Um, that set up. So we need um, score equals zero round equals one not round one equals false because we're going to start on round one and we're going to start the round title counter at 180 And then we are also going to start up here. We're going to move this. We're going to start game state at zero. Okay. <clears throat> so now we are going to talk about game states. So in our draw function, I'm just going to move that stuff down for now. Um, we're going to talk about a switch. So if you write switch, and then you put in a variable and then you open and close brackets <clears throat> what this does is this is basically an if statement where what happens depends on what is the value of game state so you write cases for the different ifs so what i'm going to do is write a case zero And then I can put my code for when we're in the start menu. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to push and pop. And then in between that, I'm going to set the background to zero to make a black background every time. I'm going to set my text size to 32. And then I'm going to fill with white. <clears throat> and then I'm going to make some text. And I'm going to say press enter. And then I'm going to set the width, or the, the X and the Y to be a percentage of the width of the screen that I looked at earlier. This makes it pretty close to the middle. <clears throat> with the text size. And 
and then what we need to do is at the end after the pop we need to write a break and what this says is this is the end of this case okay so then what we need to do is we are going to go and write our next case so we're going to write case one so if game state is equal to one then we're going to do this code <clears throat> so in here we are going to make a new function in a little bit called the round update so that's going to be an error right now but we're going to make that function in a second and then we're going to do update render and break because that's mainly our game code and then we can take out this update and render outside of the switch then after we break we can go down and we can make case two and this is where the player's dead so what we need to do here is we need to push and pop and we're going to set our background to zero we're going to set our text size to 32 and then we're going to write some text to the screen so we're going to say text game over we're going to set the width of the x and the y with the width 0.38 fight times 0.5 we're going to write another text that says press enter to play again we're going to set the x and the y with the width write our break after that and then I'm just gonna hit control T to update all of my um, spacing so we have this round update and we need to write that so I'm gonna go down to below the render function and put that in there. I'm going to say it's a void round update. Write that function. So in here what we need to do is this is going to be all the logic for what round is displayed to the screen and when do we make more asteroids. So if the round title counter is greater than zero we want to say round title title counter minus minus so that every update if there is any any time in the counter then we're going to subtract from that time <clears throat> and then we're going to write an else statement and this is if we just finish a round, then we're going to set the round title counter to zero just to make sure that it's at zero. And then we're going to say not round one equal to true. So this is only going to matter after the first round, um, but we need to make sure that we know. And then what we're going to do is we're going to write an if statement for if round title counter is equal to one and it's not round one. So what this is going to do is it's, is it's saying, are we just about to fi like finish going into a round and we're not in the first round? Round title counter. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add more asteroids. So we're going to say for int i equals zero, i is less than the floor of random 
from five to eight i plus plus and here we're gonna say asteroids dot add new asteroid boom and then we need to do one more thing where we add to the round so if the round title counter is equal to zero and asteroids dot size is equal to zero so the saying if we didn't just start a new round and there's no more asteroids on the screen then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the round title counter equals 180 or three seconds because we're running at 60 frames a second and then we're gonna add around to the counter all right so then what we need to do is we need to update our render code to have the <clears throat> all the stuff in it for the round counter so first we're gonna say if the round title counter is greater than zero then we are going to push pop and here we're going to do text size 32 we're going to do text I'm going to say round space plus round and we're going to set the width or the X and Y to the width <clears throat> so 40% of the screen and the height to 40% all right and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna also write the score to the screen so we're gonna say we're gonna push and pop here we're gonna say text size 32 text score space actually we'll do a colon space and quotes plus score and then that, that'll be at 50 or five percent it'll be in the top left corner So then what we need to do is we also need to add switch statements to our key presses. So I'm just going to bump those down a little bit. And I'm going to say K or switch game state. I'm going to say case zero break. Case one break. Case two break. Now I can hit Control T. I'll fix all my spacing. I'm going to copy this empty switch. I'm going to put it in key released, <clears throat> so I don't have to write that again. And then in case zero, uh, I'm going to write if key code is equal to 10 which is the enter key then I'm gonna do game state equals 1 and then in case 2 I'm just going to take my code that I moved down over here this is all the game logic code so I'm gonna cut that out and I'm gonna put that in case 1 and then in case 2 I'm gonna say if Key code is equal to 10, game state is equal to 
one. And then I'm going to also run a function called instantiate variables. And we are going to write that in a second, too. I'll just copy it so I have it for later. All right. And that is that switch. And then we just got to do the key release switch. So nothing for case zero, case one right now. Um, you might want to add stuff later. So we'll have them there. And then I'm not going to have that copy anymore. I'm just going to copy this code up here. Hit control T. It'll fix all the spacing and stuff. Then I'm going to quick copy this so I make sure I spell it right. And we're going to go all the way to the top, right below setup. And we're going to write a function here because this function is going to be used for the setup of our game when we do a new game in the middle of like without like rerunning our code. <clears throat> so then what we're going to do is we are going to write this to be void instantiate variables. And we're going to take everything but game state. So we're going to take all of these, put them down here. We're going to take all of these up to frame rate and put them in instantiate variables. And then we are also going to write in here our function and call it when we set up. So this gets called right when the game starts and whenever we lose and we restart the game. I think that's it. So let's give it a go and see if it works. We'll press enter. Round one. If I was better at this game, that would help. There we go. Now it's round two. It's going to wait a few seconds, and then more asteroids are going to come. Oh, the only thing we're not doing is we're not letting me die when I get hit, and we're not adding to the score. So let's do that real quick. <clears throat> so instead of the player turning red when they die, so we're going to get rid of that. We're no longer going to have them turn red. So we're going to take that out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the dead variable as well in player. And we're going to simply find where we check for that collision right here. And instead of calling player.dead, we're going to set game state equal to 2. And then we need to add a score every time that we shoot an asteroid. So right here, we can do score plus equals 100. Let's try that. <clears throat> Alright, so now my score is updating every time, round two, I'm going to die, game over, press enter again, boom, and then we're back to round one, and our score updates. Alright, so if you want to get me or Mr. Laban to come around and check your code, make sure you save it, and... Yeah, then you'll be able to start doing some of the challenges.